Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. I want to remind you, if you're just tuning in for the first time, you can actually listen to us on our podcast at thestephennightshow.com, or you can watch us on our YouTube channel, The Stephen Knight Show. Please subscribe, please comment, please like. We definitely appreciate your support. Ms. Parker, how are you feeling? Happy Monday, guys. How are you? Doing well, doing well. How was your weekend? It was actually busy, really busy weekend on Friday. Um, I did some shopping and cleaning. I had a busy week at work, so I had a lot of errands to run on Friday. And on Saturday, it was pretty busy. Uh, the Love Project built out 22 um, young men. We didn't have any women on this initiative this week. Uh, Remind last week. what the Love Project is again. The Love mm-hmm. Project is a group that was started by um, 14 women, including myself, led by um, Pam uh, Stewart, who is an attorney. And uh, Chris Stewart is the attorney that represents a lot of the um, victims of police brutality. His wife is Pam Stewart. She's an, she's an amazing attorney in her own rights, uh, an amazing person, amazing human being. Um, she reached out to us about three, almost three weeks ago, so I can't believe it's only been three weeks. Um, it, the initial uh, text was that there was a, a, a woman who had um, children that needed some help, and um, her husband had been arrested in the protest. And she wanted us to sponsor the family. So it was literally just a text message asking for help. Anybody that can donate, anything that anyone can do. Within an hour, we raised $1,000 and was able to help her out. Um, and then a couple of days later, she said, let's keep doing this. Let's start an organization and, and start helping people. So um, the bailout was something that um, came out of the protest and came out of the unrest that happened shortly after we started the project. So it wasn't our initial our initial idea for the project, but we are gonna take on different initiatives that are gonna help the social condition of our communities. Um, and we're gonna to try to, you know, if we're gonna do so, we are gonna do so with love, for love, love for our people, love for our community. Um, the, the group is a mix of women of all nationality, but I love the fact that people are bringing different point of views, different backgrounds into the group and, and helping, we're helping each other understand um, how things can change and everyone work together and, 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 and is able to make an impact together. Um, so our first initiative started off as, as, okay, what's the immediate need? We're going to help pe- get people out of, out of jail for Father Day, Father's Day because we realized that a lot of young men are sitting in jail for six, seven months over they can't afford a $3,000 bond. And what that means is $3,000 they only need 300 <laughs> yeah. um, and they can't get anyone to pay $300 to get them out um, because a lot of these uh, young men are from uh, coming from homes where um, finances uh, is an issue. And, and so poverty and all those things add into it. Um, and so we, re- we recognize that we can make an impact with a small amount of money. Um, we reached out to Ebenezer Baptist Church, which initially used to have an initiative about three years ago. They started building out Fathers for Father's Day, they heard about what we were doing when they reached out to us and offered, said that they weren't able to do it this year because of COVID, they weren't able to launch their campaign, they've been, you know, helping in other ways in the community, and so they were going to give us their resources, which included their bills bond plan. Um, he was able to tell us that with $10,000, we can probably build out 50 people or more. Um, and we and, and because he is aware of what we're doing, he's really only charging us processing fees, so if it's a $300 bond, he's paying the $300 and then charging us the processing fee. So we've been able to raise $40,000. TI donated to us. Uh, Killer Mike has been a, 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 a part of our, our um, project, helping in different ways as well, donations, giving the guys that come out of the um, come out of jail haircuts and other resources. We're working with an organization called the Boys Academy. They're going to help men. Uh, place the younger men with mentors and help them find jobs. They're, um, they also partner up with large companies and restaurants that are able to help hire these guys. Juicy Crab, if, you, you know, if you're in a, a Black neighborhood, it's owned by a Black man. I forgot his name. I think it's Gary. I can't remember his last name. He is a big opponent of helping hire young boys, young men who have been in jail, um, who can't get a job anywhere else, so support that business. So businesses like that, we're going to try to partner up with those businesses and, and uh, help these young men get back on their feet and get back um, and get back uh, moving in the right direction in any way that we can. So that's where we are now. Our next initiative is going to be to help the Boys Academy raise money so they can 
help us more. Um, but right now we're still raising money for the, um, now we're calling the Freedom Day uh, release because Father's Day, we're able to get 10 people out. We were slower in our process because we didn't fully understand what all needed to be done when the paperwork needed to be turned in. We're getting better with our process. Um, we are, excuse me, we're actually meeting the guys. We're taking the shifts at the jail houses um, and waiting for the guys to come out. And typically when they come out, they're given their clothes and they're sent on their way. So they were just so shocked to have people there waiting for them. And they literally just walk away. They walk until they can find a few dollars to take the train or somebody can help them get a ride. They literally just <laughs> get them out of jail with no martyr card, nothing. Mm -hmm. If they're lucky enough to have families that are there to pick them up, that's great. But one out of nine have a family member waiting. Um, mostly just, they're just, they just walk out and they're so happy to be out. They, you know, they just walk off and try to figure out how they're going to get home. Um, one of the gentlemen that we got out from the DeKalb County um, jail that when I was there, he didn't have anywhere to go. And we had a younger, a younger a sister of Pam with us, she's 17. And she had a hard time processing that. Like he has nowhere to go, no family member he can call. And we, you know, for me, I had to take a step back too. Like that is, that's some people's reality, you know? Mm -hmm. um, he, we, we gave him some gift cards and martyr cards and offered to, you know, get him an Uber. But we stood there for hours with him trying to figure out how are we going to make it work. Um, we ended up finding somebody in his circle. We, we got him a hotel for a couple of nights, someone who's going to help him try to find long-term transitioning um, in our circle. I'm sorry, that's going to help him find a long-term solution, but he had absolutely nowhere to go. So we're going to try to make an impact. It's going to be story by story. It's not going to be, you know, it was 22 people last week between Fulton County and DeKalb County. Uh, we won't know how many uh, we're going to have this week until um, Friday when everything clears. So what happens is you, you nominate somebody to come to, to be billed out by us. The attorneys in our group would do the legwork as far as vetting the person. We can't bill out anybody who's been charged with a serious crime and domestic violence, anything like that. These men have been sitting in jail for things like simple battery, getting into, the fight, getting into a fight with somebody at the store or something. Yeah. Uh, and the police was called on them. And then one one young man, I talked to his mother. She's going through so much because her other son just passed away. Um, he's been sitting there for breaking into a car here in Sandy Springs. Um, mm -hmm. And he's been sitting in there for seven months. So what we have to realize is these guys are sitting there for seven months without a date in court. So they've been given a bail and that's it. So re let's say his charge is breaking into a car and his sentence is two years. He's been sitting in, in jail for seven months already, waiting just for trial. That's well, not, he yeah. hasn't been sentenced to anything yet. Mm -hmm. That is ridiculous. Yeah. And they could not afford to get him out for $300. They, yeah. You know, they spent a lot of money burying his brother. There's like so much trauma there. And yeah, then, it's a lot. you know, she showed up with her other daughter waiting for him to come out. So these are, these are people to people, you know, stories. We're going to have to make an impact one individual at a time. Mm -hmm. We're going to go into this as every individual that we encounter counts and that they matter. And that's yeah. how we're going to make sure that black lives matter is by taking care of each other and making sure that everybody else, everybody feels that they, like they matter as well. Um, well so definitely. if you well, guys definitely. can follow us on the love project Four four, we're going to be posting how you can help. We're always looking for volunteers and, um, you can definitely get involved. Well, it's definitely, I was telling you, I was watching the Sandra Bland documentary and part of the reason why she couldn't get out of jail is because she didn't have the $500 she needed. And, you know, she actually died in jail, but, um, but that was really sitting there for middle. seven months over $300. Mm -hmm. That I, I could not believe it. He was like, yeah, I've been sitting here since October. That's actually longer than seven months. Yeah. October. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous how the court system is set up. No, and it is. It and it's, it's taxing on our taxpayers' money. It's not helping anything because when these guys are taking one, he was he, the one was there since October was arrested in his uniform from work. Mm -hmm. So he lost his job, his car, and so now he has to start over. Yeah. So that's how you know, people are like, okay, how come they can't get on their feet? People have to start over two, three times being arrested and, and, and sitting in there when they can't get their jobs back. Right. That's going to, what do you think that's going to do? Yeah. It's not going to help them move forward in their lives if they have to start over every time, you know, something happens. And I'm not dismissing the fact that they have to take responsibility for their actions, but we also have to show people that you can pay your debt to society and move on. 
to right. be able to to be able to move on with your life. Very true. Very true. Well, good work for good. Thank you for all the good work you all are doing through that project. Uh, Chica, how was your weekend? Um, weekend was very busy. Um, I was actually working as I always do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 But you know, you I think it skipped right past me. I almost didn't even feel this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, jeez. <laughs> I think this one missed me. I think I missed this weekend. Yeah. By too fast. I did absolutely nothing this weekend. Um, I didn't, I don't think I even left the house. I might have, but I didn't do anything. I, and it was a good weekend to do that. Um, you know, we have a long weekend coming up anyway and kind of been doing things here and there. So it's good just to be at home and chill out. So, but yeah. Well, our question of the day is, do you believe that nice guys finish last? Ms. Parker. No, I think that nice people who choose the wrong people finish last. So I think that um, it's a, a lot of things I feel like have to be self-responsibility on who we choose to be in our lives. I read a meme the other day that says, um, have you ever been friends with somebody who haven't been friends with you? And everybody was like, yeah, I have. You know, mm. like the comments was just going, I couldn't relate. No, because I know where everybody in my life stands. I know the role they play. I know what type of friendship I have with them. There are some friends that I can just party with. I'm fine with that. I don't hold anybody in a space that they do not belong in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think for nice people, people who are kind, yes, are we taking advantage of? I consider myself a kind person that I've definitely taken advantage of, but I chose those people. I chose the wrong people to be around. I chose people who weren't, who weren't giving in returns and they were takers. Um, so I think that nice people have to uh, reevaluate uh, their situation, who they have around them, and place people in where they belong. So I think nice people who don't do that finish last. Mm. about you Chica I think that nice people who choose to be martyrs yeah they do finish last I I think you have to be a rose with thorns out in this world you have to be nice and sweet and kind but you also have to have a prickly side to protect yourself yeah I I agree with that what about you Naya yeah no I don't I don't I don't believe that I don't believe uh nice guys finish last I agree with he said though with what Chica said um uh, you do have to be prickly, you know, but I don't, I don't, I don't believe nice people finish last at all. I think they always, I think they always win. Yeah, no, I agree with all of you. I, um, you know, I, don't, I don't even look at that as an option as last. I, they just win no matter what to me, you know, nice yeah. people, good people. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I totally agree. I do think you have to have, you have to have both sides to you. You can be nice, super nice, but you also have to have a backbone because you will be taken advantage of if you don't. So I think it's very important. But tweet us at home, Steve and I show SHO and let us know, do you believe nice guys finish last? All right, coronavirus update. So we're now up to 10 million cases worldwide with over 502,000 uh, deaths. Here domestically, we're, uh, we're at a little over 20, well, no, I'm sorry. Two, we're over 2 million, 2 million uh, cases with 125, um, plus deaths that's here. Now, the state of Georgia reported over 2,200 new COVID-19 cases on Sunday, which is yesterday, a new record since the start of the p- pandemic and the high water mark that uh, comes only a day after the state set its previous high. Florida, Texas, and Arizona are emerging as the country's latest epic centers, where it was New York. New York did a great job. New York and New Jersey did a good job of bringing their numbers down and their death rates, but now Florida, Texas, and Arizona, after reporting a record number of new infections for weeks in a row. Positivity, uh, positivity rates and hospitalizations have also spiked. On Sunday, Arizona, um, it just has the numbers. They had over 38,000. Georgia had, like I said, 2,200. And those were um, the highest for a one-day uh, case, case highs. 14 states have had to pause or reverse their opening. They had started, you know, different... Uh, open as they had to stop that. And now there's this controversy over the whole mask situation. You know, your president refuses to wear a mask. Um, Mike Pence started wearing masks after he, he won't, he won't say that you need to wear a mask. They won't mandate it. Uh, they said that you need to follow what your local uh, areas are, you know, the government is saying, but over the weekend, Mike Pence went to um, a church. He attended a church service. He did have on a mask, but they had a choir over a hundred people singing they had no mask on in sight 
And so, you know, he's supposed to be over the whole task force for the White House. And they're saying that he and Trump are not leaving, leaving by example because they refuse to follow the guidelines that they are telling everyone to follow. So what are your thoughts on the latest with everything going back up? People thinking that Georgia might shut down again. What are your thoughts, Ms. Parker? Um, early on in this, um, in, in the coronavirus um, pandemic, I read that there was a, a city or a country, I could be mistaken, that went ahead and opened up early on, like in April, right, when things started, was heavy here. They had been experiencing it since February. They had been aware of it and putting things in place since February, and their numbers were up and down. And uh, came to the conclusion that this virus is going to have to go through most people. Um, so they just opened everything up and then just, you know, people who ever got sick, got sick, the healthy people were able to move forward. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, people who are passing away and people who are losing people, I, I don't want to dismiss that. Uh, but I think that um, we are going to have to come up with a different, different way of dealing with it because this is not working. Staying at home and wearing a mask and all this stuff. That's not working, and and people want to move forward and live their lives. No no reason of being alive if you can't do anything. Um, you know, it's kind of how I'm, I'm starting to see it. That's what people are thinking, um, especially the young generation. They want to they want to feel like they're living their lives. You know, and and going on since March, it's hard to keep people in the house and keep people you know shelter in place and all of these things. So um, I think it's going to have to be. I still believe everybody's taking personal responsibility for their own health. But I think they're going to have to be a rethinking of how we go about living and adapting to our new norm and also uh, integrating our lives into our everyday, you know, state of being. Um, I don't know how that's going to be done, but I'm continuing to, to practice social distancing as far as I'm not in large crowds, but I am going forward with my life. I am, it, I, I, at this stage, I feel like it's worth being around some people I care and love and, and want to be around that's going to help feed my soul and help my spirit um, be in a better place with all this is going on than to just be alone in the house. Like, I think to me, that would probably be worse than anything. Um, so, but I think it's a personal, it's a personal decision. I think that, you know, you be mindful and obviously be kind and, and be aware of other people around you. If you're in the store, there are older people there, wear your mask. Um, things like that, but I still think there has to be a balance. Okay, Chica? So Governor Cuomo made a good point, and he basically stated that, you know, this is not a second wave, what we're experiencing. This is part of the first wave. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of people are looking at this as a resurgence. This is still part of the first part. The resurgence really comes in when we are back to full capacity and we have uh, the virus looming around then. Um, with the way that people are operating, it's never going to change until we start adhering to our own health needs instead of trying to live life like it was. It's never going to be like it was before. We're going to yeah. have to augment and actually change how we are living so that we can live. Mm -hmm. um, Staying in the house and not being productive is not an option. You just have to be productive differently. And a lot of people are hard-headed when it comes to wanting that change yeah. or, or, or operating under the change of, you know, what we have to do in order to get past this part. And um, I, I'm, I'm beginning to be a part of we just need to jump back out there and get back to life, but do it with the parameters of safety. Yeah. Until we do that, we're going to have these hot spots and trickle spots of um, the virus simply because we're not operating how we're supposed to or how we need to. Yeah. Now you? Yeah, yeah. You know, God bless America, right? This is this is the place that everyone kind of can do their own thing. So people do their own thing, uh, and so. Uh, I, I hate to, I always do this. I got to go with what Chike said as well. You know, those hot spots are going to remain as long as people are doing their own thing. The only thing I can personally do is uh, uh, kind of observe uh, the world outside of my window, which is what's happening in my literal region. You know, what, what, what are, what's the consensus in my region? Who's getting sick? Who's getting sick around me? Who's wearing masks? Who's not wearing masks? What's the climate around me? 
Um, and, and people who I'm connected to when I reach out, is anyone getting sick? What's the latest diagnosis for someone? Ha have I actually experienced another death since uh, the two that I've already been connected to? Uh, me, not so much right now. So I'm kind of in that strange zone where it's like, well, what's happening? No one really knows, but no one around me is, what do they call it, symptomatic? Yeah. No one around me is they're visible. They're asymptomatic, yeah. Right, yeah, so, so that's what I'm, that's either I'm encountering that or I just don't know. So we, it's, it's, you just gotta move forward smartly, again, with your health in mind, your family's health in mind, your connected party's health in mind, and just do your best. Um, and I also agree again with Chike, you gotta be productive in new ways. This is something that I've been wondering about so much. Everyone says from the political front to this pandemic front, nothing will be the same. Everything's gonna be different. And I'm really trying to figure out what that means for, for Nair. I, I really am curious to understand what that means and what that actually translates to a year from now. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard the way he kind of broke that down made me just, again, re-examine this idea. Cause yeah, you do, you do have to become productive in new ways. If you live in your house or your wherever, your apartment or whatever, now you kind of got to really separate your spaces in your home because certain places won't allow you to be productive in your home. You know, certain, certain vices won't allow you. You got to figure that whole thing out if you're sheltering in, in place or, you know, uh, in your community even, you know, so. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, you know, the reason why we're seeing the deaths go down is because there's the younger people that are catching it, the 20s and 30 year olds, even 40 year olds catching it, and they have a better chance of beating it. The problem is a lot of people are walking around asymptomatic. And so it may not impact you a certain way, but you may pass right. it on to someone else who just pass it on to someone else. And like someone was saying on TV, why would you want to be part of a chain that has killed somebody? You know what I mean? So I do right. agree that you have to move forward and create a new life, but all the, the doctors and the scientists are saying, wear your mask, social distance. If you can't social distance, wear your mask because the, the, the percentage of passing it or catching it is so drastic when you wear your mask. And so for me, when I see people on social media or wherever walking around, no mask, you know, it's just like, you're being irresponsible, I believe. I believe because you're, you're risking passing on to someone else. So I do agree we have to move forward and um, find a new normal. But if they're saying wear the mask, wear the mask. Like I had a friend um, who he's helped, he was helping someone else out work-wise. And so he made the person wear a mask. He has never worn a mask the whole pandemic. <laughs> he hasn't worn a mask the whole pandemic. So it's just like, you know, I, I don't know. At the end of the day, I do agree, Ms. Parker, you have to find what works for you. You have to be smart. You have to be wise. Um, and for me, I just know people that I see that aren't following those guidelines, I love you from afar. You know what I mean? That's all you can do to take care of yourself. Were you about to say something, I, again? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so down there in Atlanta, are the proprietors forcing people to wear masks before they no. come into their establishment? No. It's really? actually... It's actually um, more lax now so for example yeah. the grocery stores used to have wow. people in the front cleaning the carts now almost every grocery store i go to is where it's free for all now it's back to normal it's back to thank god mine's not was. mine's still cleaning but i know wow. what you mean. it yeah. was where they, i mean they have the they have the the sanitizer wipes so you can clean it yourself but most of the stores except for probably um trader joe's and whole foods whole foods require you to wear a mask and they have a cleaner in front it cleans the cart before you grab it. But except for those two stores, every store around me, the Publix, the the um, the Kroger that I, that I go to over here, the, the Farmers Market, all these, all those stores are where you grab your own thing, and if you forget to wipe it down, you just don't wipe it down. It seemed like you know they're going along with the let's move forward message as well. So I think people are seeing that as okay, well maybe we are good. Um, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a complicated thing. I don't want to impose too much of my personal beliefs in it because I think my personal beliefs varies a lot from the mainstream. Um, but I, um, you know, I think everybody should just make their own decision and, and, and do what they feel is best for themselves and their family, but keep other people in mind as they do so as well. Most definitely. Most definitely. This is eye-opening to me, simply because here in Pennsylvania, you can't go into an establishment without a mask. And they have people now, they hire people security mm -hmm. to make sure that you social distance on the come in. Sometimes there's lines to get into a store 
and uh, you have to wear a mask and you have to use sanitizer before you come into the establishment. But see, that's why the, and South, this is having, moving forward. the South is having so much more issues because we were slow to test. We weren't testing at a higher enough rate. And now it seems like everything's back being almost normal. So I don't know. I know wow. we're already, me and Ms. Park were talking Friday and I was saying one thing about Atlanta, it is so much fun in the summertime and we are missing out on this part. <laughs> now everybody, people out there living their best Oh, you're lives. right. <laughs> well, you had to cl- they had to close this club here in Atlanta because several people tested positive uh, after going there. So it's just like, you know, let's take a quick break. We'll come back with a few more hot topics right back after this. <laughs> 